All right. Trying to get the, there we go. Uh-oh. Oh, well, here we go. What are um, express registration pages? We use these a lot to create a one-stop shop type thing. So they allow you to create a, a registration form which collects the personal data, course fees. You can do workshops and take payments, um, either credit cards or an invoice or both. Um, and so what we like to use it for is we set up just on our website, uh, on the course page, a registration button, and it goes directly to the um, express registration page. But if also, if you're doing a specialized conference for a group, you can um, provide a link just to that group. So um, the only drawback to the express registration page is that you can only register for one course at a time. So it's a single use. So if somebody wants to add to the cart, um, this isn't the avenue to take. You would use the normal registration process. Um, and um, so that's the only drawback that we found um, with it. The cost is built in to, to what you're already paying for your ACE web package. Um, we have reached out to Aceware a couple of times for some custom programming, um, but uh, if you, it's really not that hard once you learn how to do it to um, set up these. A lot of times I'll set up, I have like several different little sets and I'll just pull one up and uh, copy it and kind of update it for the next one. So it's not like you're having to recreate the wheel every single time. And when we do the express pages, um, we don't usually do a login or account creation. Um, we use them for um, paid courses, free courses. We do some that have workshops. We set up ones for international programs. We also have set up exhibitor and vendor forms. Um, we do our um, summer camp registrations. And then we also use them for outside clients. So we do contract um, with clients outside of our internal office. So you might ask, how do you get an express registration form? You just simply download it from the um, ACEWEB customer resource page or ask your technician for a copy. There are two types, the HTML or HTM um, page, which um, is the one we use most of the time, and then also the script-based templates. And I'll talk about each type of page for you. Um, I don't, uh, if you need help with this part, um, your technician would be able to help you, but you put the uh, template page um, under the um, ACE custom folder. And now we have um, different uh, alternate interfaces that we use. And so where you may have ACE as the main one, um, I might also have OLLI or GEDI. And so if you're doing a cust uh, an express page, you have to make sure you put it in the right alternate interface. They don't all pull from just the main one. I normally name all of my um, uh, express registration pages, our course ID number. So for example, the one you see here is C230124. So that tells us um, it's year 2301 is the month and 24 is the date. So that's just how we identify our courses. And so I match up the um, course ID number is the same as the express registration title page. We have used a, a generic page um, uh, called like tax registration if we're trying to apply it to several courses, um, but I've only done that once or twice. They're really simple to use. Um, one other um, small thing is that it's not um, interacting directly with student managers, so it's kind of a static page. So anything that you put on the page that might need to be updated, um, you have to go in and update that page. Everything's hard-coded. You can change and have a different logo at the top, and that's especially why we like it um, when we're doing it for clients. Um, we can make 
make it look different than the normal template that wraps AceWeb. Um, so um, one thing that um, I always have to stress to people in the office is when we set up these um, uh, express registration pages in student manager under the fee tabs, the fees are ordered. So you see the early registration fee one, student fee two. So when you build out the um, express registration page, um, the fees have to be in the exact same order. So um, uh, it, if they don't match up, if your fee one in student manager is early registration fee, but your fee one on your express page is your student fee, then it it when you go to your payment gateway, it's just going to straight look at fee one and pull that fee. So it's, that's one thing that's really important is to always make sure the fees line up. And so with these pages, so if we have the early fee as an example here, um, when it rolls off, I have to make sure I set uh, a reminder on my calendar to go in and update the express page so that the fees still will line up with um, student manager. So I try to encourage people to get their clients to not have the fees roll off over the weekend because I don't like to work over the weekend. Um, this is just the default page that you download from um, the Aceware website that um, is an example that you can build off of where it collects name um, information. Uh, it has an option for interest codes. Um, the select size thing there, I think, is for T-shirt. You can ask questions about vegetarian meal. So here's an example of a very basic form that, that we use, where we're simply capturing um, name, firm, address information. Um, if you'll notice that uh, we have just about everything asterisked on there because uh, we want it to be required. And so um, uh, to force them to answer the questions. Um, the only thing that's different on this one is we ask a question at the end, are you a graduate of Auburn University? And um, so this is about as simple as it gets, I guess. Uh, this is an example of a client registration form. The logo at the top's changed. Um, and uh, this one, they asked for us to include cancellation information and then also a coupon code. Um, and if you have multiple fees, then on the drop down, it'll show the different fees. Uh, this one is a webinar we do once a month that we started during the COVID. We're still doing them. Uh, it's a free webinar we do each month. And, um, and so instead of click here or click to make payment, um, I use uh, click here to finalize registration. We tell them there's no fee, that they're securing a seat in the class. So I try to be clear and direct with everything. Okay, so um, for workshops, we have one particular client who likes to set everything up in workshops. So we, um, and the uh, student manager, it shows the workshop codes. And so you use those codes to connect the workshops on the express page. And they just uh, use the drop down, select the workshop they want and uh, make the payment. And you can still utilize the functionality in workshops of requiring a certain number of workshops and then a max if you want, but we don't usually use that feature very much. But if you do use it and they don't meet that parameter, they'll be prompted at registration before making payment to um, select more than one workshop if needed. Oh, right. so. Uh, we do um, handle a few international um, program registrations during the year. And one thing I learned really quick about the international registrations is uh, someone who lives abroad, they don't have a zip code. So I created this format here um, 
to, to be more in line of having two address lines and then a postal code and a country. And then the phone information um, uh, is a country code. And so uh, the other aspect I learned about doing these express registration pages is, is normally on our, um, we use Bluefin as our um, credit card um, provider, Bluefin Pay Connects. And so um, normally we ask for the zip code, like when they're in that, that environment. And, but we have to actually take off the zip code question in PayConnex so that it will process the credit card. I don't know if um, anyone else has ever ran into that, but um, we suspend asking for zip code um, when we're taking international payments. Uh, this is an example of on that same um, international registration where they wanted to add a companion fee as an optional fee. And so that's what you see here. And then we asked for the name of the companion. They had uh, several items they wanted to, to highlight under registration fee options to make it clear to the person about when the fees changed and what the fees included. And then they also on this one had an optional workshop that a person could attend. We have a global community day festival that we started last year and we have a what we call the vendor registration. So we would collect the company information, the booth representative. We had forms that um, the vendors had to um, supply and questions to answer to be an AU vendor. And then also they had optional items for adver, uh, ads in the magazine that they could select. So this one really had a lot of different um, items on it. All right, we don't do this very often, but sometimes we'll have someone who wants to offer an invoicing option as well as credit card payment. So um, this is how I have set it up before where um, you give the option um, for both. Um, and so you have either um, credit card payment or pay at the door for the invoicing is the terminology we used on this one. And um, it, you just have to go through the normal invoicing routine and student manager if, if they select the invoice. Um, I mentioned before we use some alternate interfaces. Um, we do, do have a contract with the Alabama Department of Labor. They have their own look and feel that they like. Um, something that's interesting about theirs is the way it's set up is because all of the text information is actually just pulling directly from um, student manager. Uh, this is one of the WCS pages um, and it's the, the catalog description. So all that text information before where the personal information fields are is actually pulling directly out of student manager. And then they just have a simple registration information that they select. Um, and like the one I just showed you is one of the script pages. So the nice thing about those is it allows, if you want a login capability on that one I showed you, it did not. Um, it, um, I'm about to show you one we use for summer camps uh, and it will pull in, if you change a fee in student manager, it will automatically update your fee on the um, WCS page. So on the WCS pages, um, on the ACEWEB tab under the information page, I, you need to put in the name of the, um, uh, express page with the WCS at the end. So this past summer, we decided to step away from the HTM, the express pages, and go with using the WCS pages for our summer camps 
because we wanted to give the parents the opportunity to be able to log in to an account that they know they have and make um, payments if they're on, on a payment plan um, for a summer camp. So uh, we had it so that immediately when they went to register, they were prompted to either log in or create an account. And this is, is pretty long on the screen. So it took up to, uh, so for the summer camp, if you already had an account and you logged in, um, it would automatically pull in some information directly from student manager. So the information you see filled in is information that when I logged in, it automatically saw me and pulled it in. And then all of the other information, date of birth, grade and fall, gender, t-shirt size, all of this was customized um, and it's generally the same format for each summer camp, but sometimes we would um, have different information, like uh, different uh, grades in the fall or something. And then where you see where it has camper agreements, um, they could hover over any of the um, releases or procedures and see the agreement, and then they have to agree to it before they can move forward with registration. And they had. Um, they could pay a deposit and instead of paying the whole registration fee, they had optional fees they could select from. And they even had a camper code, a discount code, the coupon code they could use. So I was pretty happy with how this turned out last summer. And I believe we plan to move forward with using it again. We are using it again for this summer. So I had mentioned before too that um, we like to make fields required. And so if I had simply selected make credit card payment and the fields aren't filled in, then the end user is prompted um, that this field is required. And so you can't move forward to making that credit card payment until um, you fill in all of the required fields. So just a short recap. Using the um, HTML pages, they're um, quick and easy. You don't have to set up account creation. It's easy for the end user. It's a faster registration process and that it's just one click and you're done. I kind of reuse them. You can personalize and customize and you can use them for both, both free and fee-based. The only thing that's a drawback um, about that type of page too is you end up with duplicate name records. So someone in the office has to go in and um, make sure that uh, uh, Mary Smith, who may have taken the EagleCast webinar five times, she'll, she'll be in there five times. So you have to go in and um, combine the records. Once you figure out the coding, it's not that hard. And, and then just having to make those fee changes um, when the fees roll off. Um, the WCS pages are nice because you can have that option for the account login. Um, there's no duplicate name record. It's a dynamic environment in that if you change something in Student Manager, it'll automatically change it on that registration page. And the templates wrapped in the whole ACE web look like normal, like you normally see on the ACE website. Okay, that's it for me. Let's see what we have in chat. Very good. I just sent out a prompt for questions. And okay. so, um, but mainly, Karen, this is probably for your customers or clients that. Uh, number one may not want their users to log in like a guest right. registration because they're just coming in the institution wants or something and they don't want to have to create an account or two you want a direct registration for a single course mm -hmm. come in get their data get their information get their payment and out without using a shopping cart so benefits of express registration there others that i missed karen that um, drives you to make the decision on whether to put on a regular ACE web registration versus express? Oh, that that is most definitely the strongest reason, even with the um, having the duplicate registration records is they want it simple and easy, you know, just bam, they're done one stop. So mm -hmm. very good recap. That, that and rebranding. 
be able yes, to, yeah. to to uh, showcase another customer, you know, run a course for another customer or a conference and and have their branding on just that page. Right. Very good point. We don't need a whole yes. alternate interface for one customer, no. for one program, but the program, they don't want to use Auburn's branding perhaps, and they want their own on their good point. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Very good. Other questions from the group? Uh, there's somebody, so you can have a regular ACE web registration page as well as Express Rage. You use them concurrently, correct? Yes. Yes. And then your URL, uh, Maxi, would, that you use would drive straight to that page when you're registered out, would go straight to that express registration page. Right. And, and that's what we do. We, we put the direct link to the registration page off of our um, conference or summer camp page. Um, and it goes directly there. So you don't see like the whole course group listing or anything. It just takes you directly to that one page. Mm -hmm. Now, Matthew, we have um, a quick pick, a few quick pick users on today. Um, what about quick pick? You can use that concurrently with regular ACEWEB, yes? Right. Um, now, so quick pick, the difference would be it's, it's uh, multiple. Multiple courses. Uh, you're, mm -hmm. you're registering in multiple things on one page, not just one course at a time. Um, but I, I do kind of want to backtrack. Is Maxi asking if you can have the regular registration flow for the same course as, as an express registration? No, I didn't interpret that that way, but Maxi, you can clear okay. up for that. If you're wanting, you wouldn't want express reg and yeah, she's exploring options. Okay. Yep. Yep. Very good question. Okay. Right, that that's good. That's a good point, Matthew. Right. No, you can't register within regular ACEWEB and Express registration. It's either or, but you Correct. can have some courses on regular ACEWEB and then some on Express. And Same thing with Quick Pick. Yeah, you, right. Yeah, Quick Pick can um, it. it, it I, not really take the place of regular registration, but it's just kind of, it's meant for, you know, those, those, you know, people that are coming in and just, I want to register in these five different things and be done with it right quick and not have to go back, add course to cart, blah, 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 go find the next course and add to cart and, you know, that works, route. yeah. Quick Pick works really well for those of you that have courses that are in high demand, but they have limited registration capability. I think of Black Friday where they're standing at the door waiting for <laughs> the doors to open, but they're waiting with their mouse just ready to click on the things they want, pay and get out. Um, that's where Quick Pick comes in really, really handy for multiple course options. Express Reg is more of a single course client based. Mm -hmm one and done or I, we want guest registration option or our own branding good questions okay it's, it's kind of quiet there they may think of things um, while matthew will switch over to his slide deck to talk about supplemental data capture if you think of other questions along the way go ahead and drop those in there we can we can get both presenters to respond here so let's see it's Everybody's seeing Matthew's screen. You give me a thumbs up or a hands up or something. I think I'm seeing him well. All right, Matthew, enlighten us on supplemental data capture. Yeah, so this is kind of totally different gear here. So this is with the regular registration flow, you're wanting to collect additional information, whether it's name information or registration information. Um, uh, or UDF information, uh, you can get that uh, with a supplemental data, data capture page. So example, so um, uh, t-shirt size, which Karen was showing on Express Reg, and really with Express Reg, you're kind of, you you can ask supplemental data on it because you're, you put whatever on an Express Reg page. But uh, yeah, this this adds to the regular sign up page, if you will, you know, you, the sign up page, you're asking your core data information, but now you're in 
specific courses and you want to get different things. And a supplemental data capture page, one thing about it is you can use it on multiple courses. Uh, so if you have an I agree to the terms and conditions, uh, you know, capture box, you want to get that that captured um, and you want to put that across all of your your courses, you're creating one page and and it can be reused then on every single page that or every single course that requires uh, you to do that. Uh, but other things you can ask for, you know, meal preference. Um, so if you've got a conference and you're wanting to make sure, um, you know, the people are getting gluten free or or vegan uh, options, you can you can do that. Uh, birth date, age group, that type of stuff. Uh, birth date. I mean, you can ask that on the personal data capture. So if th this would be if you don't ask on the regular uh, sign up page, you can add add this to the supplemental data capture. Um, creating it. So the same custom folder that you would put express registrations, um, express registration forms, uh, it's the same custom folder that you would get, uh, put your data capture page in. And there should be an example in your current uh, set up called data capture.htm and I it has like 10 different things on it um, you know like the the t-shirt example um, and um, oh some some of the UDFs and things like that uh, so you you're not starting from scratch uh, if it is missing from your custom folder or you don't have access to it um, a lot of you guys are probably going to be creating these pages on your machine and then handing it off to your IT, de IT department to put on your web server and put into the custom folder for you. Um, so you can download that da data capture.htm from our website um, and also you know, email your technician if you can't find it or, or something. Um, uh, and we can get you a link to it. Uh, make a copy. The thing is kind of, I, um, Karen mentioned it, you know, she reuses her, her express pages quite a bit, but the, the kind of the programming law is to rip off and replicate. So don't start from scratch, grab an existing example, bastardize it to do what you want it to do. Uh, that's kind of the, uh, programming law. So, uh, you're not starting from scratch, make a copy. Uh, and do, when you're naming these, name it something relevant. So if you're just asking t-shirt size, SD t-shirt size that HTM, uh, where SD stands for supplemental data, supplemental data, uh, then you can uh, realize later on in life, hey, that was for t-shirt size. Oh, I need to use that for this conference coming up. You know, whatever you need to, to uh, help you remember because, hey, if you just call it, well, uh, Karen was calling hers C0231, what, whatever. I'm not going to realize what those are numbers are for. Um, now, for her, those have a very specific meaning to her. But for me, coming in fresh, I'm looking at those numbers and I'm like, whatever. Uh, there is one rule or kind of two rules here with the naming convention, do not use the course code or the grouping code. Those have um, uh, specific conventions. Um, so don't, don't name it those. Um, otherwise they're, you're gonna mess up some other things in AceWeb. And yeah, I think I've harped on the custom folder is where things need to end up. So yeah, it, and if you've got multiple interfaces, make sure it's the custom folder of the interface that you're needing uh, this in. Uh, similar to the express registration page is you are setting this, the name of the template on the data capture page on the template. I don't know if you could see my mouse here, data capture page on, on student manager on the ACE Web Info tab. So in this example, unlimited.html, 
uh, is is what I'm using here. Um, yeah, so put that there. So this is where you would put, if you want to use this on multiple courses, however many courses you want to use it for, uh, put it put it on all of those courses. Uh, if you would like, get with your technician. If you do have something, you know, like a terms and conditions thing that you need to have applied to all of your courses, get with your technician. We could get you, uh, um, get with you and get a script put together to put that page on all of your courses rather than you going through and uh, putting them in each and every course that, that uh, is needing it. Uh, save you a little bit of time there. All right, so we kind of have two different modes with supplemental data capture pages. And one is into the enrollment cart itself. So right below the fees, it'll show the uh, additional registration information and have whatever your data capture page is asking for. So in this example, there's a t-shirt size and meal preference. Um, and, and so this option is called ECDC. Not in, I know it's, yeah, enrollment cart data capture. Uh, so the, but in your INIs, it's called the ECDC um, in there. So if you turn that, now I got to remember which is which. EC, ECDC to on, that's the first choice. ECDC to off is the second, in which it actually, so you are on the enrollment cart, you choose your fees, proceed to checkout, actually takes them to a separate page with just the supplemental data capture information on there. So it, it pulls it out. It kind of would help, like if you have, a ton of questions you're asking. Um, I could see that being helpful, having that extra page in there so it doesn't clutter up your enrollment cart. But I, I really do think, you know, 95% of the time, put it on the enrollment cart and it um, just to save that extra click because you really, um, yeah, any, any chance you get for people to hit a back button, it's like try to avoid it. One one less page for them to go through, uh, and it's just all right there. Especially if you're only asking one or two different things, you know, just put it on the the enrollment cart and uh, keep it there. So my recommendation, ECDC to on, uh, is going to suffice for ninety five percent of you guys. Uh, as far as actually adding and editing fields, there's some rules and kind of just you know, listen to me now, but later go to the help guide. Because I think even, even when I do a supplemental data capture page, I go to the help guide and I consult off of it. Either that or, you know, get my slides, download them after the webinar uh, and keep them handy. Um, and you can go back through these rules again. But uh, so, so here's the kind of the convention when you're looking at putting a field on a supplemental data capture page. Uh, you're putting the first three letters is the type of field. So if you're doing a text box, a list, uh, so a drop down list or a check box or radio button, uh, you're doing TXT, LST or CHK as the first three letters of the name. Then it's the data type. Character, numeric, date, logical, memo, just the first, first letter of each of those data types. The fifth, so this would be the fifth, is whether you want to have the field required or not. Zero is not required, one is required. So in this example I have up here, it's not required. Um, and I'm not... I don't know. It seems like if you're going through the trouble of trying to ask these questions, I think most of the time you're going to require it. So put in number one on it. Um, I'm going to talk about more information about what happens with required fields because there's some special things you've got to set up with the data capture page. 
uh, if you've got an older page, especially. Uh, but then the, the remaining characters of your field is the field name. So out of student manager, that field name, uh, you can use off the register screen, RG code, RG status, RG confirm, RG print cert, those fields, um, those are fine to use on a supplemental data capture. Any name field, any name UDF, any reg UDF, you can also use. I'm also going to talk about unlimited UDFs on another slide, but um, yeah, you can do those as well. Okay. Once, um, one thing that's very important with these is make sure your value equals quote, quote, or value equals on with checkboxes or radio buttons. Um, and then with a drop down list, have a value equal something. Uh, value equals small. And that's how you're going to make sure it's got something to start with. However, if you are wanting, like out of a name field or a name UDF, something out of their name record, to pull into the supplemental data capture kind of as a confirm. Maybe you are asking um, your date of birth on your signup page, but you want on the supplemental data capture page on these specific courses that it be required that they fill it out. Maybe it's not required on the signup page. So you can have this oname.odata.nmbirth in the double hashes, put that in the value for the field, and that will pull that out of uh, out of student manager or out of the signup page if this is a brand new account, pull it out and redisplay it, uh, and then they can change the the data element on the data capture page. Um, one other thing to think about is there's the tab index on the fields. If you are moving things around, make sure you change the tab index. When I what I'm talking about tab index is like when you're in student manager and you're on uh, the name record, you tab from first name goes to the middle initial goes to last name. There's a specific tab order set in student manager. Same thing on a web page. Your tab order should flow down the page. Um, so if they tab from birth date and then there's, or let's say first, middle, and last name, you know, they tab from the first name and they go to the last name and then they go to middle initial, there's some disconnect there, need to reset your uh, tab index values. So uh, if you guys have SQL Server, make sure you have max length set on each of the, the character fields. Because if they try to put in 40 characters into NUDFC1, uh, they're going to get a SQL Server error each and every time string or binary data too long to fit. And yes, I've seen that way too often. So that's why I have that error practically memorized. So yeah, don't, don't set it longer than what it uh, needs to be. Uh, it it needs to follow the max length rules as uh, as set forth um, in in the help guide. So um, yeah, make sure you set that. Uh, I think I'll, I think the pretty sure that the the uh, data capture that you download off of our website has those max max lengths uh, set in there for you for those examples. But yeah, just double check on on the other ones. You don't need max length on check boxes, radio buttons, um, date fields because those are fixed width. Uh, oh, the text area. So those are your memo as well. Uh, you don't need the the max length. Although you could set a max length on a memo field if you are you know you don't want them to be writing novels every single time. Maybe. Well, and yeah, just, yeah, you know that their response is going to be under 100 characters, say. You can set the max length to 100 characters on those, but you do not have to. On the open text fields, on other fields, you have to set the max length. So, okay, requiring fields. 
I kind of mentioned this before and went off of it, but um, you can, but you can't require checkbox and radio buttons. Radio buttons, absolutely not, because you have to have a a yes and a no, or a you know they're going to have multiple things going on, and you can't really check to see which one of those is is the is actually checked. Um, also, with a checkbox, the no option is it's just unchecked and that's considered blank uh in in the data world so if you're wanting them to make sure that they un you know they either check or uncheck the box you can't really check for the unchecked however if you've got a checkbox that says i agree to the terms and conditions blah de, blah de, blah you can require that because you want them to say yes every time to that. So you can require it to to check and make sure that they have check marked the box. Um, do, do, do. The one thing also, there's this rec checks hidden field that's on the data capture page that you download from our website. It may or may not be on your copy of data capture.htm in your uh, ACE web. You might double check and make sure that it is there if you are requiring fields. Um, and then you make sure to put into the value field which, which data elements. So here we got. Uh, Reg un, uh, Reg user defined logic one and Reg user defined logic two, both being required in this example. So, comma separate the fields and put them in here uh, of what you're wanting to require. Um, drop down list. Uh, one thing about it is so if you are going to require make the first option like have it say select t-shirt size and have that first value be blank and that way it forces them to select small medium or large from the drop down or you know however many different sizes you've got a t-shirt that you want them to select uh they have to choose one of these other options they have to choose a non-blank option if you're wanting to require it. Also another consideration, if you've got numerics that you're trying to capture, make sure you don't want the uh, value of zero because zero is considered blank. So that's, uh, it won't let them pass if they just put in zero. They need to put in one, negative one, whatever uh, numeric uh, that is non-zero. Uh, to actually get past the uh, requisite. Uh, requiring fields. Um, so this is, uh, oh, what I was showing before, this is uh, with using ECDC on, this is with uh, ECDC off, I think. Um, No, what is it? Validation required class. So this is, oh, class equals required needs to be put in to the, the input tag when you're, when you're using the ECDC option. That's what I'm trying to say here. Okay, so add that to the tag and, um, oh, also, you do need a, a updated copy of X and roll card.htm. If your technician has been keeping you up to date and keeping your templates up to date, then you've probably already have it. Uh, this has been years since we've added this, this class equals required to the, to the system. So um, you guys probably should have it, but just um, ask your ask 
your technician if you uh, need to have need to double check to make sure that you've got it. Uh, and that would be in the case that you have uh, updated your enrollment card and then in subsequent updates have asked to not get it updated because that would ruin your uh, customizations. So yeah, uh, yeah, just need to make sure to have that stuff enabled. Appending data. So this would be like if you've got uh, name comments uh, and you're trying to get, uh, well, you can add to name comments uh, uh, without overwriting what's already there. Um, really, one of the things we've talked to, or this example is it's asking two questions and getting the answer for the the two different um questions and putting them both in uh name comments um so what it does is is really puts the answer to the first one puts a couple line breaks after it and puts in the new answer so this would be so maybe you, they've done answer one answer two and then next year they come back and do the same summer camp and now they need to answer one and answer two again. Well, now there'll be really answer three, answer four coming down further in the uh, comments area. Uh, so you can just keep appending um, uh, as many times as you need to. Um, and really the, so the one difference instead of just the name NMCOM after the, the first portion, the first five characters, there's this uh, extra word of append in there. Unlimited UDFs. Yes, it's possible to put unlimited UDFs on a data capture form. Uh, it does only work with the ECDC equals on. Another reason why I re highly recommend always using that setting. Um, if you need to require a field, there are there's there's some JavaScript that needs to be added, um, and I think that's already on the newer. Um, that's already well. I can't remember if it's on the X and roll card or if it's on the the data capture .htm, But either way, uh, if you if you've already got the latest, then it's already there. Um, so this has. Uh, when you're building the field names for a unlimited UDF, you do the the prefix like before, followed by the in UDFU or R UDFU, depending on if you want name unlimited or registration unlimited, and then followed by another uh, uh, underscore or followed by an underscore and then the uh, field name. So text, R-U-D-F-U, underscore, dance, underscore, partner. So dance, underscore, partner is what you've called the field in Student Manager. Uh, or if you're getting dance partner put on the registration, or uh, wait, this is the registration. Oh, I was going to mention, if you are doing dance partner or something like that, um, another thing you could think about doing is the partner enrollment package. Uh, see your technician if you don't know what that is, or uh, go out to our, our uh, uh, ACE web demo and play around with it. because That's really powerful to get partners registered uh, and, and, and enrolled in your, uh, you know, in courses that require partnership. Uh, so like dance courses. But anyway, dig I digress. Uh, name records is kind of the same thing, except you can also pull the data out. So if you've got a fun underscore code, whatever fun underscore code is, uh, you can pull that out with this o name dot o u u data dot and then the the name of the field. Uh, that so if they've done a data capture page in the past and they filled in the fun code, 
it would pull it back out and show them on the supplemental data capture page and they could change it if they need to change it or um, um, be like, oh, I've already submitted that in the past. You guys already have it. Yes, confirm it's the, still the same. Uh, if you have it being a dropdown, you can have the HTML generated to do the dropdown for you. Uh, and that's this session dot get session var, and then you do the the name UDF drop or or reg UDF drop followed by an underscore, and then the name of the the field. So in this example, movie genres, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever, uh, that would show then a drop down list for you to pull, or for for the student to then pull and uh, select from those. And then, so those would be defined in um, in uh, the code main area in student manager. So when you're defining, ah, where did I go? Hit a button. Uh, so when you're defining your unlimited UDFs, there's that drop down code and you double click and you go in and put the different movie genres or whatever you're you're doing the different choices for uh you can do that there so uh one example i've seen with unlimited udfs that i think and i think more and more state institutions are are uh, going this direction is with ethnicity being able to choose multiple ethnicities so they set up different unlimited udf check boxes and then so then you can go in and select I'm part Native American, part um, Latino, whatever, you know, uh, whatever they need to check uh, as their multiple ethnicities, uh, they can do that. So, um, um, yeah, and that's based on state reporting requirements. Um, and I've seen already have seen that and I think more and more states are going to go that way so questions very very good Matt um, a lot of these <clears throat> I think see a lot of you out there that run youth programs and so I've seen many that use this when you have to capture what allergies and um guardians and different people they can call this the supplemental data mm -hmm. capture for when you have to capture above and beyond what you can already get in manager this is this is what you use for that um, we have a few questions here first of all as i mentioned youth programs and oh there's waivers and everything more and more matthew people are needing signatures and so maxie's asking mm -hmm. if you have ideas of signature capture at this time or is this something we need to kind of revisit internally on like no TV? yeah go ahead um so yeah i do that all the time especially with um uh oh let me go back here um no no where's the example um uh but it's like that I agree to the terms and conditions and then right below it have a signature box. But yeah, you just you would put that into a um, supplemental data capture page or, or not a supplemental. You'd put that into a registration uh, UDF or an unlimited UDF either way uh, so that whatever they type in, it goes in into this. Now, if you're wanting like the, you know, the scribble box, um, I don't think we can do that. I mean, we, we no, yeah, we don't have that capability for the, the scribble box for them to do that. But uh, if retyping their name would suffice for you guys as far as capturing a signature, uh, yeah, just set up a uh, UDF of some sort to capture that. Okay. Um, they're asking about supplemental data, including document file upload. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that's kind of, I just realized that 
one thing I'm lacking in my presentation is the attachments. Um, and, and it's kind of a whole nother wicket or kind of, yeah, it's another thing you can do with subtle supplemental data capture pages is do the, there's what's called attachments.awp. And what it is, is so you link out to another page uh, where they do, they it can be one document, it could be multiple documents, but they're uploading a document and that goes into the name docs area of student manager. Um, uh, but so yeah, that can be done. Um, consult the help guide, consult your technician uh, if you need uh, more information on that. Um, yeah, we can get it done. Okay. And I should also mention to everybody that in um, students' accounts, in their ACEWeb accounts, there is a place for document upload within their profile mm -hmm. as well. So that's something you might want to look at. And Jason, I'll direct you to that um, if that's of interest as well. But if you look in our sandbox, the ACEWeb sandbox, and you have a profile set up, you can see there's a big button for document uploads there too. Um, you can also require document uploads at the time of registration. So they can't finish their registration without uploading a certain document. So 